Hi, my name is Laura Borger, and I don't just play a teacher on TV. I play one in real life. There have been a lot of questions about what is the classroom going to look like in the midst of a COVID pandemic. And I thought I would bring you into my classroom and show you a couple of things that I plan on doing when we go back in August. So the classroom in the midst of COVID. Uh, mask talking is a little on the difficult side, so I've purchased a couple of voice amplifiers. Uh, who knows if you can't even understand what I'm saying right now. But what I'm understanding is state boards of education, uh, departments of health, and the CDC have put together a bunch of guidelines for us. And I just want to look at what a couple of them might look like in the classroom, put into practice for when students come back. So. A couple ones I want to look at is just wearing masks, maintaining social distance, and washing your hands. I don't even have time to go into washing hands in this video because this video is already longer than most TikToks and I've lost most of my viewers already. Uh, masks, the new dress code. When I walked into school today to do this video and just check out my social distancing uh, options in my classroom, I saw these signs outside my school, which was awesome. Unfortunately, I saw some of my colleagues walking around in the halls without masks. So even though it says face masks covering required upon entry, that might also need to be like, you need to keep them on after you've already entered the building. That'd probably be good too. Now, according to the CDC, COVID spreads mainly for, uh, by infectious people who are in close proximity uh, for a prolonged period of time. And social distances is important because we don't want droplets from an infected person ending up in the nose or mouth or lungs of an uninfected person, okay? And that's where masks come in. Keep your wet droplets in your holes. I'll keep my wet droplets in my holes. And maybe that way we can keep safe. These masks are not protecting me. They are protecting you from the spittle coming out of my face. You do not want my spit in your nose hole. I do not want your spit in my nose hole. We don't know each other well enough for that, okay? And that's why masks are required as well. And so anyone who enters into a, a school must wear a face covering at all times. In fact, I'm wearing two right now. Um, I have two cloth masks on because I don't have access to an N95, which would protect me. And so I'm just trying to kind of double the pleasure, double the fun. Um, I was joking that I wanted to have a Darth Vader uh, voice maker, but just taking deep breaths to speak is uh, doing that for me. All righty. So face masks are important. They are a way for you to keep your goop in your own body. Uh, in sex ed classes, they say wrap it before you tap it. Uh, I want to convert that to like, this is a face condom to keep my liquid in my body and off of you. So let's wrap it before we teach it or wrap it before we learn it. I mean, are you disgusted? Good. If you're disgusted, wear a mask and then we can all get along. It's the new dress code. So have one. That'd be great. Wear a mask, maintain social distance, wash hands. Can't even get into that right now. So what is the COVID classroom of 2020 going to look like? Social distancing and masks bring big pedagogical changes. One of them is just breathing. <laughs> now granted, this might be easier with one mask instead of two, um, but I just wanted to try it out now. Every single um, medical professional who does an interview usually has two masks and wait for it. They also have a face shield. So this is getting like normally I would want to dance for my students, but I feel like I might uh, pass out if I did that. So uh, masks and social distancing automatically, I look a lot different. I've been doing this for four minutes and my mask is really, really hot. It's really, really sweaty in here and uh, I need to stop talking now. And so here's what I think the uh, classroom of COVID with masks and voice amplifiers and face shields is going to look like. I plan on rolling a film. I'm going to do a flipped classroom live. I'm going to roll film of a lesson that I've pre-recorded for my students over a topic related to whatever it is we're covering that day. And they will watch the video while I stand here like a creepy Vanna White smiling and pointing at me, teaching them in ways that are going to be a little bit more animated, a little bit more realistic and probably include a lot less heavy breathing. And hopefully we'll get the point across of some of the main concepts for the day. 
Flipped Classrooms have been around for a while. They've not been used in this particular application. I'm just going to try Flipped Classrooms live and see how that goes. After we watch the video, students will do some sort of passive seat work at their desks at a distance. Now, I've taken photos of what my room looks like with social distance seats where the seats are spread out at six feet. If they're six feet apart, I can have nine students in class. If they are uh, three feet apart, I can have 16 students in class. And then if they're two feet apart, which is what they're at right now, I can have 22 students in class. P.S. When this is all over, let's all talk about reducing class size because that's just better for everyone, not just during a pandemic. So students will need to stay in their desks and they will need to stay six feet away from me because I don't know that I'm going to be comfortable getting face to face with students to help them on whatever work they're doing. Hopefully we've gone to one on ones and students will have computers and have access to computers at which time they can text me or email me their questions. I can text and email them back. It's possible they'll have their phones in class. Maybe I'll have them text me that way. Who knows? It's a brave new world. What this means, though, is that a new COVID classroom will not be like the non-COVID classroom of the past. In the past, my students sat in seminars and we threw a ball around and we had lively, enthusiastic discussions. I would set the classroom up with art stations in the middle and they would be completely chaotic and all over each other and all over the classroom and that cannot happen now. Students cannot lay on the floor in big clumps working together, close together, that breaks social distance rules. They can't do fun group work where they go through and play with candy and get up in each other's faces and breathe each other's wetness. They can't enact theatrical reductions of Shakespeare. They're not going to be able to teach each other bird calls, um, as in this case from last year, one of the favorite things from students uh, in 2020, 2019. And we definitely cannot do recitation competitions. Singing, choral response, uh, standing and reciting things out loud is unequivocally known to spread COVID. And so that's definitely something that we're not going to be able to do. And which is something that used to be really integral to my teaching philosophy. You know, get students up, get them moving, very kinesthetic. All of that is going to have to change. Because safety and reducing the spread of this disease is imperative. That's my number one goal. So, flip classroom, passive seat work at a distance. COVID classroom is going to look a lot like the classrooms did in 1918 during the last epidemic. If we can pull this off, maybe we see few people getting sick. You know, that's the key here. Constant need to pause and breathe um, is evident of how difficult this might be. It's difficult, but not impossible. Fortunately, my students hopefully will be patient. The suck thing for them is they're going to expect they're going to expect all of this fun stuff. They're going to expect all the fun. That's what my class is. My class is fun, but it can't be fun. I have to be safe now. So it's going to be a little bit different. My final thoughts on this, you know, global pandemics are no joke. Social distancing, masks are going to be absolutely imperative to reducing the spread. It's kind of a lose-lose. We're trying to avoid a lose-lose and either have a lose-win or a win-lose. We don't know. I haven't even talked about how I'm supposed to go back and fill in all the gaps and learning from last year. How I'm supposed to get students ready for uh, state standardized testing or all of the kinds of um, assessment things I need to do to get evaluated by the Danielson model to keep my job. Jazz hands! One of the things that I always say to my students is be safe and make smart choices. And the smart choices that we can make are doing things like wearing a mask, maintaining social distance, and then washing our hands for at least 20 seconds. These are the only things that we know of right now that do reduce the spread. If we work together, maybe we can make this work. If we don't work together, we're going to go back onto lockdown. And I will say to all of the students and parents out there, if you're not fully comfortable coming back, I will work with you to have a remote learning plan. That's just going to be part of this problem as well. We're either going to be in school part-time and do remote part-time. If you want to do remote most of the time, I will help you with that. And odds are pretty good some of my classes are going to go that way too. We'll just see what we see. Everything's up in the air right now, but this has been your 10 minutes of COVID classroom chats with Mama Borg. I'm your host, Mama Borg. Be safe, make smart choices, and I like you.